for another edition of the Average Guys Guide to Life podcast. And we made it. Motherfucker, we made it again. We made it again to another Friday. Another one. Another one. Another fuck your fuck your faces all fucked up Friday. It's freaky freaky Friday, y'all. God damn. God damn, I'm the happiest Friday. Damn. Like this shit if you glad it's happy. You, 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 what the fuck was I about to say? Damn, I just fucked up my whole sentence. Like this shit if you glad and happy that it's motherfucking freaky freaky Friday. For real, y'all. Damn, it feel good. Damn, it feels really good. I'm your host, Aaron The Difference, and there's a number of reasons I feel good today. Not only because it's Friday. Friday make me feel good, of course. Long work week, couple days off, big weekend, all that shit. You hear me stop, you know I'm sipping. You know I'm sipping, because it's Friday. And tomorrow is a UFC pay-per-view event in, in the honor of... Of who is in that event. His name is Connor. I am sipping on some proper 12. Whiskey. So if you hear me pause. That means I'm sipping. I'm not choking on my spit. Like I usually am. When I make my pauses. It's, it kind of sound like this. You know. That's my regular pause. But my, my pause on the freaky freaky Friday. You faces are fucked up. You know. It's going to sound like this. Damn, that shit tastes like liquid cardboard, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Shout out to Conor McGregor, and I'm feeling good today, y'all. Feeling real good, and, you know, got my my whiskey and my cigar, my usual tradition, and I, I planned on starting this off talking about some other shit, but man, Eminem, M, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathis just dropped a surprise album last night, and I just finished listening to the whole thing, and damn that motherfucking white Negro, damn that white Negro, he can make some good music, he can really rap and rhyme words, <laughs> uh, he, he's very good at rhyming words and making metaphors and using cadences and uh, being lyrical and Using flow and offbeat, onbeat, um, fast. He hasn't done much slow stuff. I mean, he he mixes it in. He, he but he he likes to show off his lyrical ability. So he does a lot of you know up tempo shit. Very good, very good fucking project. It's very dope. Um, Eminem is definitely one of my favorite artists. Of all time, of any genre, and if anyone knows me, I am very picky about the fucking music I listen to, and I listen to more than one genre. Although I'm a Negro, I just don't listen to soul and R&B and rap. I listen to rock and roll, country and jazz, and you know, classic rock and Celtic music, and you know, anime theme songs. I listen to a lot of fucking shit, and to this day. The old man, the old white man with the beard, used to be the young white man with the blonde hair. You know, he's still up there as far as any genre of, of music that I enjoy. He, he really, he inspires me to be a better artist because I listen to him and I listen to who he has featured on his projects. And it just puts a fire under me like... Damn, I know I am just as good. And I'm not just fucking saying that for the the artist's integrity's sake. I'm not just saying that to toot my own horn, so to speak, because I listen to my own stuff as a critic. I don't listen to my own stuff as a um as a fan of myself, just kind of 
basking in the glory of my own voice. I truly listen back to my old shit, my new shit as a critic. Like, this was bad. This was good. I need to do this better. And every time this fucking white Negro drops a fucking album or a project or features on someone's shit, or he has someone feature on their shit, on his shit, I should say, I'm like, man, that's fucking good. And I, I instantly in my head while I'm listening to it, I am, excuse me, excuse me, I am deconstructing the verses in my head and I'm deconstructing the punchlines and the, the, the way that it's, um, coordinated the way that it is, um, structured and I compare it to my shit and I'm like, there's no way, like I am just as good. I haven't had lucky breaks, people. I haven't had that many lucky breaks, but I know for a fact that there is a level to every fucking thing in life. There is a level to shit, bro. And girl and madam. I hope I have some madams. Damn, women, listen to me. Anyway, um, there is levels to every fucking thing in life. And I feel like that man is at the highest level of what he does because he does it for a profession and he doesn't have any distraction and distractions in his life. He doesn't have to work a nine to five like a lot of us out there. And he doesn't have to um, deal with the stresses of life, like living from paycheck to paycheck, even though that that breeds a different sort of hunger. But he doesn't have to do that. Like his full time gig is to be better as a fucking artist. So he's on such a fucking level that no one can reach. And he was already on that level um, entering the game and looking at myself. I'm like, damn, it only makes me want to strive to be better. Damn, I was talking about this shit for seven minutes. Fuck. Let me move on. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, (laughs) Fuck. But I'm really excited to get back to work on that field. So if you guys haven't checked out the the new M project, if you're a fan of his, of course you have. But it's some good shit. Um, just to get this out of the way, too, because this isn't usually Freaky Freaky Friday subjects. But I want to cover some sports, too. Just a little bit. Just bear with me, people. Fucking bear with me. Uh, got the NFL games coming up this weekend. The, the championship games, the conference championship games. You got uh, Tennessee versus Kansas City, and you got Green Bay versus San Francisco. They're going to be great games. I'm not going to get into the deep analysis. If you want that shit, you got to watch Fox or ESPN. Uh, I'm just going to give you my picks. If you care, if you take my picks or gamble on my picks or whatever the fuck. Now, if I'm picking with my heart for the AFC, if I'm picking for my heart, I'm picking Tennessee Titans because I think their story is great. And I think that since they beat my team, the Patriots, if, since they beat my team, they should go all the way. But if I'm picking with my head, I am picking Kansas City because Kansas City's just fucking made goddamn Texans look like, I don't know, made them fucking look like a Division Two college team. Like, what the fuck? That shit was crazy. Put up 51 points in a football game. It's insane. So my my heart says the Titans. That's what I want. But my head, if I was betting, I would bet on Kansas. And I'm pretty sure they're the fucking favorites. And on the NFC, NFC side, uh, I don't like Green Bay. I'm from Chicago. It's in our blood to hate Green Bay. I respect Green Bay. I respect their franchise. I respect Aaron Rodgers. I think it's something with their colors. I don't like their fucking colors. I don't like the way they mesh. It it reminds me of like mustard and relish for some reason. Like piss and shit, piss and green shit colors. But I respect their team and I respect the talent and the athletic ability of all the players on their team. In San Francisco, of course... They've been monsters all year. So if I'm picking with my heart, I'm picking San Francisco. And also with my head, 
I am picking San Francisco. They took them out in the regular season, made them look like amateurs, just rushing the quarterback, had um, Aaron Rodgers not looking like himself. Their defensive line is stout. Uh, so heart, San Fran, head, San Fran. Lastly, on the sports topics, before I get into the Freaky Freaky Friday shit like I normally do, I'm not going to go over the entire UFC card coming up tomorrow, but the main event, Cowboy Donald Cerrone versus the notorious Conor McGregor. I got to go with my boy Conor on this one, even though Cowboy is dangerous, Cowboy has versatile skills, he has great jujitsu. He has great grappling. He has fantastic head kicks, head kicks, and he has more wins, more finishes, more bonuses than anyone in the UFC. He's been he's a fucking war tested veteran, and he doesn't look like he's lost a step, even though he lost his last two, but he lost them against people that are title contenders. He's never f fucking looked like he f he fell off, you know. Um, but I'm going to pick Connor because Connor seems like he's extremely motivated for this fight. Donald approached this fight like he approaches every fight. He's a fucking monster. He fought like 11 times in the three years that Connor has been absent. I mean, that Connor only fought once, I should say. Um, but I think age is a factor. I think speed is a factor. And I think um, just motivation is a factor. And Connor's motivation outweighs Cowboys at this point in each of their respective careers. So I'm going to pick Connor in that fight. I'm going to say he's going to get a uh, referee stoppage in the second round. Now. Now that we have that out of the way, welcome back to another edition of the Freaky Freaky Friday Average Guys Guide to Life podcast. And if you don't know what the Freaky Friday is about, we're going to cover um, some adult topics, some shit that you shouldn't have your kids in the room for, maybe, I don't know, we're going to have some punishers. Journal. And we got some dating stories. I didn't like the good story last week, even though it was a good heartfelt story. It was a story that was, you know, like a fucking lifetime romantic movie. But I think the bad stories are so much better. Just so much better. So this week, I'm going to be giving you nothing. But the horrible experience. Um, and hopefully you can have a laugh at my expense. I don't mind. It is what it is. But before I get into that. Um, I wanted to ask you guys something. Because I am always, always, always seeking knowledge. And who better to get knowledge from than to my loyal listeners. Even if you aren't loyal, even if you're kind of loyal, but you have like a wandering eye, still, I want your opinion. So, from my experience, right, my personal experience, women that aren't attractive are instantly intimidated by the presence of an attractive woman. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Like I said, this is just my personal opinion and my experience. This is why I'm asking you guys. You're the experts here. You're the experts. Not me. Okay. Now, this is just from me witnessing things, right? And I want to know if I'm correct or if I'm incorrect. Okay. Now, I'm going to lay out a scenario. This may have happened or this may not have happened. But there was someone at their job, right? And they work with the majority women. And this person is a male. 
And the women that he works with are a majority women that he aren't that he isn't attracted to and women that just generally by the the spectrum that we hold in society wouldn't be considered attractive women. So it's fair to say that this person, this guy works with a lot of fucking fugly good fugly girls like okay i tried to be nice about it but these bitches ugly okay not only are they ugly but they fucking round they're round okay so we got a bunch of fucking um trolls and uh goblins that this guy works with now there's an open position at the place where this guy works okay now, I'm not saying that every woman that this man works with is completely repulsive. By God, that would be, you know, but just not his type. And just generally by, like I said, generally by American standards, not attractive women. Okay. If they fucking posted a picture of their whole body without any filters on Facebook, they'd get like a handful of likes. Okay. Where you know. You know the standard that Facebook keeps for women that are attractive, the like ratio and the strangers in their fucking comment section offering to take care of them and suck their toes and, you know, do all sorts of unspeak, un, un, un fucking speakable things to their vaginas. So, OK, now there's an open position. And there in comes, in walks in, an attractive woman. Maybe an eight and a half, right? And then everything just fucking stops. So like a standstill. Not from the guy's perspective, but from all of the women around him. Like he can feel the energy shift, you know? The energy shifts. Like at first they were in their zone and they're feeling good and they're going about their business. You know, they're talkative, they're laughing and all that shit. And then the end comes the eight and a half nine and it, it all stops. And they're like, fuck, what the fuck? The fuck told you to come here. Why are you here? Pretty person. This is no fucking place for you. Pretty person. You know? And you can, like, the jealousy and the envy and the rage kind of radiates from their fucking skin. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's just me. This is what I'm asking you guys. Like, is this normal? Like, does this emotion exist is, I guess, the question I'm trying to ask. From a woman's perspective. Because me as a man, I'm, see I'm not seeing it. I'm recalling it from this guy's perspective and you can kind of feel it in the air you know what i'm saying you can kind of feel it you can feel when someone's um mood shifts changes like instantly snap of the fucking finger you know and it's it's uh it's curious to me because it's like if you're not attractive because of some deformity or your facial structure is just fucked. I get that. There's nothing you can do about that outside of plastic surgery. You know, going under the knife, getting some shit moved around in your face, make you look more aesthetically pleasing. I get that. But as far as you being round, that you can change. Just go run. Just go for a fucking run. Go for a walk at least. You know? Stop putting cheese on everything. That's a start. You know? Don't put fucking cheese on your Cheerios. Fuck. You know? You don't have to eat mashed potatoes with every meal. You know, 
Like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Get a big ass lamb chop on one plate and a side of mashed potatoes on the other plate. You know? Eating whole bucks and shit. Eating whole fucking cows. You don't even kill the cow. You just put the fucking potatoes on the cow's back and eat through it. <laughs> you know? But uh, I want to know what you guys think. Like, does that feeling exist? Like, is that the insecurity that radiates from women when someone that they clearly know is more attractive than them enters their vicinity? I really want to know that. Like, I really, really do. So I hope you guys fucking reach out. But, the, but you know, there's something about certain states, too, man. Like, certain states, certain states in this country, they have a fucking weight problem, man. They have a fucking weight problem. I'm not going to lie. And this is speaking for me, from my personal experience. You know, I've lived in Chicago. And I've lived in Wisconsin, and I've seen a bunch of other states, you know, and strictly Chicago, Wisconsin, and the Midwest in general, we got some good ass fucking food, bro. Good fucking food. Speaking of cheese, you got cheese in Wisconsin, they got fried cheese, melted cheese, 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 cheese hats, cheese curds, cheese doodles, cheese fries. You know, speaking of cheese fries, Chicago shit, you got beefs and you got sausage, you got dogs, you got burgers, you got pizza. Like, it's a, woo, mm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I just went grocery shopping myself and bunch of, bought a bunch of fucking grapes and salads and pears and oranges. Because I got self-control. The fuck? It's some round people in the Midwest, folks. It's some round people here. And I'm going to be single. It looks like. For the unseeable future. Because I refuse. I refuse. To lay down with a fucking yoga ball. I refuse. I mean, that's just not what I'm into. I'm sorry, ladies. I am sorry. If I got self-control, y'all can have self-control too. And if you ain't round, you got kids. And if you ain't round and you ain't got kids, your pussy is like a hallway that a motherfucker can just walk through. Just step right into that motherfucker. Your pussy got Lamborghini doors. Like, what? What the fuck? You know? And if and if you ain't round, and you ain't got kids, and your pussy not like a fucking uh, DeLorean door, then it's all three. You're round, kids, and your JJ is like the whole of outer space. You know? But what the fuck do I know? What the fuck do I know? Self-control, people. You know, I ain't got no kids. That ain't by accident. I know what it is. That ain't by accident. Fuck. You just don't do it. You know? And you examine the product before you go into that motherfucker. That means you examine both products. You examine the one that you're putting on your winky. And you examine the one that you're about to stick your winky in. Whether it be the pinky or the stinky. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, let me take another sip of this. Proper 12. Mmm. This is some good shit, y'all. Like, y'all gotta go get y'all some of this shit. Even though it kind of tastes like dog hair. <sighs> okay, let's get into the dating story for the week. And once again, like I said on last week's Freaky Freaky Friday, um, this may be related to me and it may be not. I may fill you in on that information or I may not. But this week, I think I will fill you in 
this is something that actually happened to me. And this is actually a fairly recent story. It happened not that long ago. Okay. And I went back to my roots of sorts. My roots of when I was younger, I told you guys that I did the internet dating thing. Because it was, it was easier and you have choices and you can go through them easier from a man's perspective. I know from a woman's perspective, you got too many choices and a lot of them are fucking creepos. So from my perspective, a man's perspective, you it's just it's more efficient. But it is a fucking drag when you don't get the results that you think you deserve or that you think you're putting the effort in and you're not seeing the result or you're just trying to weed through the the people that you don't see yourself potentially matching so with that being said after a while on a website or an app i'm not going to disclose a while of being on there i happen to meet someone not meet like face to face. Who does that anymore? <laughs> um, uh, I, I met them on this app and we got the token. We got the token. And you know how it is when you first get to meet someone, right? You're trying to get all of the essential information out of the way. I have a list. I literally have a list. I keep it in my wallet. Um, essential information such as how old are you? How long have you been single? Do you have any kids? What's your residency looking like? You know, where do you work? What's your sign? Your favorite this, your disfavorite that, your pet peeve this, your fetish that, blahzy, blahzy, blah. But with this person, the initial getting to know you phase was not tedious it was kind of fluid it flowed you know like a nice river in the spring over rocks covered in green moss it was nice then i paint that picture for you mm. so everything really flowed but that's not uncommon when you're just cordial with someone right but not only did it flow this person happened to also match my level of crazy a fucking lunacy bonkers ness ness so this person had similar interests that I had with the music and the liberal arts and the media and the movies and general outlook on society and how we move throughout the world and how we should treat our peers and fellow human beings. It was on a deeper level than the, the shallow surface and not to mention the shallow surface this bitch was fine, fine, fucking fine, fucking, fucking fine. Who? Yes. Can't have it no other way, right? No other way. She was fine and dandy, looking splendid. I want a handy. Can you give it? Redbone. <laughs> About five seven, big curly hair, big luscious lips, Chinese looking eyeballs. No offense to the China China people, but you know what I mean. Slanted, kind of crooked, kind of squinty, but not when she actually want to see some shit. Nice in shape, thin frame. You know, I don't. I'm not biased against thin framed girls. I like thick. I like thin. I like in between. Whatever. Just be a girl. Um, super fun. 
And then come to realize, not only do we flow like the river, not only do we mesh on just being compatible and also on a deeper, deeper level as far as morality and humanity, social outlook. This motherfucker was on a famous television show called The X Factor. They were a contestant on The X Factor, people. She could sing. She could sing. Oh, man. It was looking like fucking roses. And this, and we were talking without any inkling that it would ever slow down. Like, ever. I'm in the back of my head like, damn, I'm a married this bitch. Did I just meet my fucking wife right now? Is this happening right now? I'm in the back of my head like, damn, I might actually go down on this bitch. Is this happening right now? Am I about to eat some pussy right now? Nah. We gotta fucking see the product first. Because we all know. We all know. By now. The internet lies. It lies to you. You think you're getting. Fucking. Steak and potatoes. But what you're really getting. Is some fucking ground beef. And overcooked rice. But I didn't know that for sure. So me. Within a couple of weeks. Maybe almost a month of us. Shooting the shit. I say. Let's meet up. Let's schedule something. Let's have a date. Let's just, you know, get the hard part over with. Either it's going to be, you know, shock and awe, awkward silence. We won't fucking click. We won't vibe in person. It's either going to be that or everything that we've been experiencing over these fucking gray rectangles that we hold in our hands is going to come to fruition. Got to be one or the other. So let's get this shit out the way. Let's do it. She say cool. Why don't you come over my house? We ain't got to do nothing fancy. Just bring me some wine. I like Moscato. And I'm like, cool. Fuck. She's like, yeah, we can watch a movie. I'm like, cooler. Fuck. She said, yeah, but I got a baby. I'm like, mm. Fuck it, cool, I don't care, fuck it. I don't care, at this point, you so cool that I, I, I don't care if you got a baby. And I usually don't even fucking pull that cord. I usually don't. Usually kids are out, are out for me, because I ain't got nothing. Like I said, I self-control, I know what it is. I know what it is, you know. So, I'm like, fuck it. Now, I plan my day. It's a Sunday at that. A Sunday. During football season. A Sunday. In the middle of the football season, mind you. And I'm like, okay. I'm going to make that sacrifice. I'm going to miss my beloved to go and meet you. So I took a bus. A coach. Even though she, she didn't live that far from me. But at the moment, I ain't got no wheels. So what I do? What the fuck do I do? I ain't gonna walk. <laughs> no. Took a bus. It would have been half an hour in a car. But it's about an hour on the bus. Hour hour and a half. Something like that. Depending on the traffic and the stops. Wazzy, wazzy, woozy, woozy. You know what I mean. And I'm, I'm like the anticipation, you know, you know what you feel when, when something is building up, you know, that kind of uncomfortable anxiety, but also at the same time, unsure excitement. That's what I was going through. So I make it there. I don't know my way around this town, the town that I went to. 
So I'm not about to take no public transportation. I hop my ass in a taxi. I take my taxi to the address that she gave me. Pull up. Hop out. Walk up to the fucking residence. It kind of looked like um, apartments. It, it wasn't a courtway building, but it was. You could tell it was like an apartment community, where it was like the same structure of apartment it was like three buildings with a big sidewalk separating them in between. Um, they had to be like studios and one bedrooms. So I walk up and I ring the doorbell, you know. And I'm just sitting there waiting. I'm like, uh, is this how this is going to end? You know? Her not answering the door. Or me getting sent off. Because remember, I'm taking a fucking risk here, people. This could honestly be a fake person, too. This could be a fucking dude. You know? With just a very, very detailed, extravagant story. That I just happened to fall for at that moment. Even with the video evidence, even with the photo evidence of verification, ver- verifying identity, that could still all be staged in this internet age. In this world of technology we live in, it is not very difficult to pretend you're another person. It's not. It happens all the fucking time. So that is also running through my head. So I ring the doorbell again after about four to five minutes. And at this moment, I'm ready to turn around and go back home like, fuck, I got to take an L on this one. Looks like another fucking L back to the drawing board. You know, next time I'll try not to draw a fucking stick figure. Next time I'll try to make a masterpiece or some shit. But either way, it was looking like back to the drawing board. But maybe after three minutes of the second ring, she comes downstairs. And she looks utterly shocked that I am there. And examining her appearance at first meet. She looks like her pictures, but about 75% worse. She wasn't out of shape. She didn't, she, she didn't alter her figure. Okay. Her face looked the same, but slightly different. Okay. But I didn't have that quick, uh, I didn't have that long, I should say, to examine this person's appearance because the shock look on their face that I was actually there made me think, what the fuck? Oh, did you not plan for me coming? We just discussed this. Did you not think I was going to come? I, t- I told you I was on my way. Like, What? So, despite me almost seeming like I was unexpected or interrupting some shit, I get invited upstairs. So, I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe I just caught her on a bad day. Maybe. She's a fucking crackhead. And she high as fuck right now. And she don't know what the fuck is going on. Whether I was expected or not. She living on another planet right now. Maybe. Who are we going to see? So long story short, folks, because I'm kind of drawing this out right now. I'm drawing this out. Hopefully I'm not fucking boring you to death. Hopefully. So I go upstairs. She invites me in her house. She lives in a very small one bedroom. I'm going to give you some rapid fire facts about this one bedroom. Dirty as fuck. Smell like shit. Clothes everywhere. Maybe food on the ground. Kind of sticky looking. And I ain't never seen no apartment that looked like it had fog in the air. Like, it, was, it the air wasn't clean. It was like kind of gray air in that apartment. It was like shit everywhere. You try to step over some shit, and you incidentally step in some shit. Accidentally, I should say. 
Sad pencil shit. Like everywhere, bro. Like everywhere. Like it was like it was. It, I, I don't. I don't know. Like how can a person make an apartment look like that on purpose? Maybe. But anyway, it was fucking junky. But I was willing to forgive that if she was the person that I was having those conversations with. I was even willing to forgive a person looking like they were 75% worse. Like you like you 75% worse as far as your appearance. But I was even willing to forgive that. The bitch didn't have no sat no no edges. Like the bitch didn't have no edges. She had on a fucking cap, dingy ass, dusty ass, lint covered ass cap. Look like she got it from a, from her job or whatever. She worked as a fucking waitress. And she had her hair back in a ponytail, which I realized I quickly realized was a very poor thrown in sewn in or sew in. This is like it was barely hanging on a fucking head because he whipped that back into a ponytail, threw the cap on, and it uncovered the fact that this bitch had a Mr. T. Like, she had no edges, bro. No edges. Okay, I'm willing to forgive that. I give her the fucking wine bottle. She go and get a cork popper. And she had on this tank top. And I'm looking at this bitch arms. This bitch had fucking Thanos arms, bro. And my arms ain't small. But this bitch, mind you, she couldn't be heavier than 125 pounds. But this bitch had baboon arms, bro. This bitch like she would beat your dick to the moon. If she had the chance. This bitch like she can do more pull-ups than you. Like, whoa. Whoa. What the fuck? Now, I know what you're thinking. It wasn't a man. It was still a chick. I could tell. But I'm like, okay, I'm still willing to forgive that. But what killed it? What killed it? Is she looked at me like I wasn't what she expected. Can you believe the nerves of this bitch? Can you, be, can you fucking believe the nerves of the... Can, bitch, you ain't got no edges. You ain't got no edges. Your sew in or whatever the fuck it is look like it's barely a cap at this point. And you're wearing a cap over that. This Your house. Your fucking house. Look like a junkyard. I don't know who the fuck I'm going to find under this pile of food, clothes, and probably urine, jizz, and vomit. I don't know who, go, who who living under there. Bitch, look like you store newspapers from 1976 and you weren't even born then. And you're looking at me like I am disappointed. But I was even willing to let that go. I was waiting until we talked. And when we started to talk, it was awkward at first because we both looking at each other like, what the fuck? But then the conversation started to flow. And I thought it was going well. Maybe it was the liquor. Maybe. She started to look a little bit more like her photos. <laughs> And I thought we left on good terms. We hugged. Said my goodbyes. And I went back home. And I texted her when I got home. You wouldn't fucking believe that I didn't hear anything back. So this bitch. With the negative edges. And the sew-in cap. And the shitstorm apartment. With the last minute kid I was told about. And the baboon biceps. Flaked me. What the fuck is wrong with me? What the fuck do I look like? God damn. God damn, did that do something to my brain?
Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I must have was like, damn, what the fuck? I should jump in the lake. What the fuck? You know? But luckily, that feeling didn't last too long. And I took that L with pride, goddammit. Ate that L. And moving on to the next, I tell you. So, that's how that went, folks. Hopefully, you found some entertainment in my misery. Hopefully. And if you didn't, okay, whatever. I mean, they're going to keep coming. It's a fucking Freaky Friday tradition. That's what we do around here. And speaking of Freaky Friday traditions, it's time for another edition of the Punisher's Journal. May 2016. Punisher getting over bad breakup. Looking for a rebound. Luckily, Punisher always keeps one in the chamber. Rancid cunt. Looking for a good time. Looking for a rebound herself. Always make sure you have one in the chamber for times like this. Friend zone rancid cunt for months. Respect current relationship. But when all the Legos fall down, it's time to fill a hole. Her hole. With my cock. Schedule the date. Both of us know what's going to happen. And if she doesn't know, she's going to find out. We decide we're going to get some tacos. Bitches love tacos. And enchiladas. I want to give her a lot of cock. We schedule to meet at night. Later than usual. Most dates take place in prime time. Punisher would say between 7.30 and 9. That's the ideal time to meet a rancid cunt, get her drunk, and fill those holes. But she wanted to meet later, giving the impression that she didn't need impressing. Punisher arrives at the taco joint. Famous spot. Place usually packed. Punisher is unsure about location, but decides to go in. Punisher usually not welcomed in public places. Scowl on face scares small children and some small adults. Some large adults get aroused. Maybe this gun will get aroused. Punisher meets potential fuck buddy outside a taco joint. She appears to be already wasted. Slurring words, barely keeping balance. Punisher's job is halfway done. But rancid cunt becomes belligerent and disrespectful. Punisher keeps his cool. Now he's fucking hungry. He actually wants to eat the tacos. They go in, grab a seat, and order. Rancid cunt leans over, opens up 
knock off Gucci purse to unveil a bottle of vodka. This is no small bottle. Bottle was halfway empty. It's time to hit the eject button. This rancid cunt, too blotto to fuck, might claim rape accusations. Order food to go. Punisher gets up to leave. Punisher's followed to the door, grabbed by the shoulder, given the puppy dog face. Punisher can't resist a puppy dog face. So he decides to walk, eat, and maybe the rancid cunt get some food in her belly and could shake off the liquor. Punisher decides to take the bottle, drink it himself. Maybe it would stop her from killing her liver. And this night could end with some penetration after all. Maybe. Maybe. Punisher decides to sit on the porch of an established building during the hours they were closed, talking to rancid cunt, getting her to eat. Conversation goes well. Seems like she's back on her P's and Q's, her pints and quarts. We decide to vacate the premises. But there's no time left in the day. She uncovers that she does have children that she needs to get back to. Looking like Punisher's going to go home with blue balls of the bluest variety. Rancid cunt has idea. Idea of a naughty variety. Maybe, she says, maybe we can go in this open lot construction site across the way and fuck there. Fuck there, she says. Fuck there. Doesn't take Punisher too long to decide. Yes, bitch. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Fuck there. Punisher gets cheeks. Punisher punishes cheeks in public. In the lot. In the gravel. Punisher vacates the premises with rancid cunt. She wants the bottle back and begins to insult Punisher again. Punisher smashes bottle on sidewalk, then runs off, hops on the train, goes home, never to speak to rancid cunt, gravel fucker again. You can't make this shit up. Next time, I'll bring some bread. All right, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. I know this was a longer episode than usual. Goddamn fuck, this was a long, long, long week. But it's freaky, freaky. Freaky, freaky, your face is all fucked up. Friday, y'all, go and have some motherfucking fun. Get yourself some of that proper 12. Get yourself some Jack, some Jameson, some Hen, some Vodka, some motherfucking Goose, some Quavo, whatever the fuck. Go get fucked up. That's my goal for the weekend. I gave you some inspirational shit last weekend. This weekend, I'm saying, go get fucked up. Go get fucked. Why not? It's Freaky Friday. Go get fucked up. Go get fucked. Don't have no babies, though. Be responsible. Wrap it up. Wrap it up, guys. 
Plug it up, girls. Now I mean, all right. See y'all, motherfuckers, next week. Peace.